thank you, thank you. I am so proud to stand here today as Prime Minister of four nations in one United Kingdom. I have a specific commitment. Today, right here today, the minimum wage reaches £6.50 an hour and before long we'll reach our next goal of £7 an hour. And I can tell you now that a future Conservative government will raise the tax-free personal allowance from £10,500 to £12,500. So here is our commitment to the British people. No income tax if you're on minimum wage. A £12,500 tax-free personal allowance for millions of hard-working people. And you only pay 40p tax when you earn £50,000. So let the message go out. With the Conservatives, if you work hard and do the right thing, we say you should keep more of your own money to spend as you choose. That is what our long-term economic plan means for you. And while I'm on the subject of big economic questions our country faces, on spending, on tax, did you hear Ed Miliband last week? He spoke for over an hour, but didn't mention the deficit once. Not once. He said he forgot to mention it. Look, Ed, people forget their car keys. My children sometimes forget their homework. I once even forgot that I left Nancy down the pub. Um, <laughs> Samantha, I'm sorry it won't happen again. But let me say this, you cannot be Prime Minister of this country and forget the most important issue that we face. ago, Ed Balls said something interesting. He said in 13 years of government, Labour had made some mistakes. Some mistakes? Excuse me? You are the people who left Britain with the biggest peacetime deficit in history, who gave us the deepest recession since the war, who destroyed our pension system, bust our banking system, who left a million young people out of work, five million on out-of-work benefits and hundreds of billions of debt. Some mistakes, Labour, were just one big mistake. <laughs> and five years on, as Michael Gove just said in that brilliant speech, they still want to spend more, borrow more, and tax more. It is the same old Labour. And you know what? They say that madness is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Well, I say madness is voting for this high-spending, high-taxing, deficit-ballooning shower of an opposition and expecting anything other than an economic disaster. So I can tell you this. The next Conservative government will guarantee a place on National Citizen Service for every teenager in our country. Now that rule, that if you put in, you should get out. More than anywhere, it should apply to those who want dignity and security in retirement. But for years, it didn't. There were, I think, three great wrongs. Wrong number one, the pension credit that was basically a means test. The more you saved, the less you got. Wrong number two, compulsory annuities. They meant you couldn't spend your own money as you wished. Wrong number three, when people passed away, the pension they'd saved was taxed at 55% before it went to their family. Three wrongs, and we are putting each one right. The means test, it is going. In its place, a new single-tier pension of £142 a week. Every penny you save during your working life, you will keep. Those compulsory annuities, scrapped, giving you complete control over your private pension. And as for that 55% tax on your pension, you heard it this week, we've cut it to 0%. Conservative values in action. But when it comes to our elderly, 
there's perhaps one thing that matters above everything, and that is knowing the NHS is there for you. Now, from Labour last week, we heard the same old rubbish about the Conservatives and the NHS. They were spreading complete and utter lies. And I just think, how dare you? It was the Labour Party who gave us the scandal at Midstaff. Elderly people begging for water and dying of neglect. And for me, this is personal. I'm someone who has relied on the NHS and whose family knows more than most just how important it is. Who knows what it's like when you go to hospital night after night with a sick child in your arms, knowing that when you get there, there are people who will love that child and care for that child just as I did with their own. And how dare they suggest I would ever put that at risk for other people's children. How dare they try to go to rely on a national health service. And yes, we need controlled borders and an immigration system that puts the British people first. That is why we've capped economic migration from outside the EU. We've shut down 700 bogus colleges that were basically visa factories. We've kicked out people who don't belong here, like Abu Qatada. And let's hear it for the woman who made it happen, our crime-busting Home Secretary, Theresa May. from within the EU. Immediate access to our welfare system, paying benefits to families back at home, employment agencies signing up people from overseas, not recruiting here, numbers that have increased faster than we in this country wanted, and at a level that was too much for our communities and for our labour markets. All of this has to change, and it will be at the very heart of my renegotiation strategy for Europe. Britain, I know you want this sorted, so I will go to Brussels, I will not take no for an answer, and when it comes to free movement, I will get what Britain needs. And anyone who thinks, anyone who thinks I can't or won't deliver this, I would say judge me by my record. I'm the first Prime Minister to veto a treaty, the first Prime Minister to cut the European budget, and yes, I pulled us out of those European bailout schemes as well. Around that table in Europe, they know I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. So we're going to go in as a country, we're going to get our pounds back, we're going to fight for our national interest, and yes, we'll put it to a referendum, in or out, it will be your choice, and let the message go out from this hall, it is only with the Conservatives that you will get that choice. Thank you. 